Um, so I've had the exact same experience, and uh, a lot of times I've been in organizations where, you know, the the SE that blows out their quota year in and year out is is, is celebrated. they um, they go to the president's club or whatever they call it. They get promoted. Um, I don't always, I don't believe that that's the best SE all the time. It could be, but um, I mean, quota is only one measurement of an SE, right? Um, I think you will have situations where some SEs come into, a, a, you know, just a patch that's really rich. They're not that strong and they do well. Um, and then you can flip that and have great SEs that have to turn around a territory for whatever reason. And so KPI, you know, for, for looking at, you know, Salesforce and measurement against quota is one thing. Typically, if I see a team is struggling, um, the one thing I look for, uh, particularly with the team, uh, is chemistry, right? And a lot of the time, I called it, like, uh, where I focus a lot of time is what I call a new blood problem. It's a new SE, it's a new rep, but, you know, worst case, they're both new, right? Is, is the chemistry here. Um, behaviors, I you know, are, are another thing. I think behaviors are really important because, uh, even though activity is really important, sometimes not all activity is good activity, right? But if you're seeing that, um, you know, essentially you run reports on uh, certain conversion rates, right? It could be a demo to POC conversion. It could be a POC to technical close. Those are very measurable things you can run reports on to figure out, okay, you know, and it could be even getting deals into pipeline if they're not hitting their numbers, but you see, you know, this progression happening at, with all of these measurement points. You can say, all right, there's good activity, not just activity. There is uh, good behavior that supports that good activity, right? Um, and if you're just seeing activity and it's not good activity, and then you start to test the behaviors and maybe the behaviors aren't there, then you start to test the habits. That's the last piece for me, because maybe it's just somebody needs coaching on, on, on turning bad habits into good habits, right? And then once that happens, the behaviors pick up, the good activity picks up, and then the numbers follow. Sounds like there are some quotas. How many of you who are SEs have a quota? Okay, so that's a fairly common thing. So Brace does not have quotas for our sales engineers. Um, it's intentional, that's a, that's a conscious decision. The idea being that we don't want to necessarily, as solution consultants, be incentivized on the size of the deal that gets done. We want to make sure the right deal is done. Now, on the other hand, the challenge to that is that the quota is a really obvious and very easy to measure. Uh, so as a result, there's a couple of things. Uh, a lot of what we do is a lot sort of fuzzier than the KPIs, uh, than, than a concrete numerical KPI. We don't even necessarily want to measure a number of meetings because lots of meetings could be a bad thing. To, to the point, it, it could be bad activity, right? There's not really a point in driving that as a metric. So instead, what we look at is levels of trust between the account executives that are assigned to uh, each, of the S, each of the SCs. Um, we're assessing that routinely. I look at it monthly with the sales directors. Um, we're also assessing a lot about you know, how are each of those meetings going. Uh, I'm, I, had, I came from, before I joined Braze many years ago, uh, I was at GE, and GE is a massive feedback-driven culture. You know, all kinds of structures in place to collect it regularly. So I go out and seek it routinely, and I encourage everybody else to go out and seek it routinely. And I also seek it from all of the folks that all the folks on my team work with. How did the meeting go? What did you think? What was good? What, what could have used improvement? And try to dissect that from all angles, because there's no one story on it, but ultimately, it takes a lot of effort to get to you know, what really happened there, um, and often uh, you know, can be a source of really excellent, uh, constructive, potential feedback for the folks on the team. So, not a great, a little bit of wishy-washy answer, but, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we're, we're always working to improve those processes. Um, has anyone here read the book, Four Disciplines of Execution? Right, usually got to be some one or two. Go buy it. <laughs> yes, go buy it. It is, uh, we have built our operational um, kind of culture around this in the last two years, and it's, to, to oversimplify this concept, it is basically a concept of what is the most important thing you can do in a week, a month, a year, etc. So, the most important thing is drive growth by XYZ percentage. The most important thing is secure technical win rate by XYZ percentage. And you break it down into two concepts uh, underneath that, which is the concept of a leading indicator and a lagging indicator. Leading indicator is something you can do that will change the outcome of that lagging indicator before it's too late. So, for instance, the way that we measure our team is the entire department has a wildly important goal, which in other words is a lagging indicator because it occurs after you do all the work of 
securing 90% technical wins on all deals that reach a certain stage in our fund. So the way that we back into that is we look at leading indicators in two facets. One is, are we adhering to dry runs for deals over a certain size? Because that puts to task the SC, are you going to be better upon arrival with you and your AE partner than if you were to just show up, do a demo, or maybe recycle the one you did last week? How are we going through? Because in those dry runs, we're asking the critical questions. What are going to be the objections? How are we going to handle those objections? What are going to be some of the things that we need to make sure from a stories and proof point perspective? So dry runs is a big, big part of our culture. Um, and it's not just like a full dress rehearsal. It can literally be an hour-long meeting where we, we break each other's um, story apart to figure out where the holes are. The second thing that we look at is successful handoffs. So once we uh, win a deal and sell it and close it, do we hand off the information properly? Because we don't want to be the, people, the reason why a deal gets further down the funnel. Clients like I already answered this, or this isn't what I bought, or anything like that. So we actually track successful handoffs through a variety of mechanisms. Um, the third major indicator, and this is more a reflection on me, but uh, to Andy's point, we, we are a big feedback culture. We kind of come up with this concept of what we call a, a e-score or an employee happiness score. So on the score or scale from zero to ten, it sounds a little bitchy, but Zero to 10, how happy are you? And I ask my team this on a monthly basis. And if you're not at a 10, which I don't expect anyone to be at a 10, what are three things I can immediately do to move your score up? So for me, and the way my managers look at me, is not just the typical numerical quotas, et cetera, but how am I driving the needle? And a month over month basis, are my team consistently more happier? And if so, is it because I'm hitting the things that they have helped? So I keep track of that in the document each and every week. So we have the traditional things like how effective are you in prep time versus demo, what is your conversion rate from demo to POC to technical win, etc. We try and look at some other things because this job, as you rightly point out, is a little squishy sometimes and we don't always want to look it right. Ah, and I'm going to preface my answer with saying that ours is totally squishy at a particle. Um, and so kind of my newly found role as the critique lead, I've started to pull more data and ask for more data to be collected. Um, and really from my perspective, um, I'm, I'm really falling back on my role in Seltra because as in a purely like reactive role, that role is more of a support role where we answer emails, really help customers use a platform that they created ads on. There was a lot of data that I had that I could break down things like geographic time zones, number of times that we answered the same thing, number of times we were able to automate it. So I had data points that I just don't have in particle yet. And so right now, from a KPI perspective, one of the things I'm just like really hammering on the team is like giving me a more details. So like as you're working through the deals outside of the revenue, so if you luckily closed a deal, how did you get there? What meetings were you actually taking? Like give me a little bit more detail besides you like clicking the first thing that you saw in Salesforce. That way I can start breaking this apart. Um, so that's a piece where I think API perspective. I just want our team as a whole to just give me a bit more information. That way I can back into it to start doing and understanding things like how much time did you spend on a POC? Was it 20 hours and it was a 60K deal? Or was it 10 hours and a 300K deal? And then what were you doing in that deal that made that thing possible? I think um, on the other side, something that's less squishy and I think very unique at a particle is that the number of SEs that we have and the knowledge that have kind of really s goes across the board between like all the different teams that we would engage in engineering, marketing, customer success, uh, like our actual product marketing or product design. And <coughs> one of the initiatives that I started just this recent quarter was the content creation. So I have a very creative brain, um, just naturally. So there's a lot of things that I've created and I've noticed that our team has created. And I said, well, this is something that even the company has relied on, decks that I've made for a single customer that they were like, oh, this looks good, let me repurpose this. So now as a KPI, it's like the team, as you either gain some new insight, maybe something was broken, you help fix it, and now you understand how it works better, create a technical slide on that. How can we visualize this so the next person that has to explain this has a lead behind? And then as the company, now we have assets that can explain this better from a technical perspective. So this is like really me asking the team to create something once a week, which is in five days or four days, depending on what you're doing, 
you should be able to create one piece of creative content. And then that allows us as the company to repurpose that content for teaching purposes internally, as well as for external purposes that can really power our product marketing team. So that's how I've been approaching it so far. Perfect. Uh, 